This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to optimize your Precision T3610 workstation for gaming or other high end computing. Um, so, the first thing you want to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com, click on the blog, and search articles for T3610. And so, once you search that, you'll see Awesome Precision T3610 Gaming Computer. And what this is, is this is an awesome buyer's guide to locate high-end components for a Precision T3610 workstation. So these, these are either certified components or aftermarket components that we've tested that work really, really well to optimize the performance on your T3610. Now, we don't sell anything, but we just give you the information on where you can order these components. Um, so definitely bookmark this page. Um, everything that we talk about in the video that we've installed will be on this page, plus other components that you can use depending on your budget. All right, so let's get to the build. So we purchased this system refurbished. It was a T3610 refurbished. We bought it on an auction site. You can guess which one. And we got an awesome deal on it. It came with this E5 2687WV2 uh, processor, which is an 8-core Intel Xeon PROC. Uh, it's clocked out at 3.4 GHz. Uh, it's 20 meg, 8 GTS, uh, max turbo frequency of 4 GHz. Again, this is 8 cores. So if you're someone who wants to stream and game at the same time, um, this is going to be an awesome processor for doing that. Um, it's different from most of your, of your consumer grade processors where you're stuck with six cores. Um, we have 24 gig of RAM in the system. Uh, it's DDR3-1866 megahertz. Uh, we have a 256 gig Samsung solid, solid state drive. It's two and a half inch SATA. Uh, that's our boot device. Uh, we need this drive because you cannot boot to an NVMe drive on a T3610 workstation. Um, although we're still going to put that uh, NVMe drive in there, which is a 500 gig Samsung Evo 960 NVMe.2 drive. Uh, we have to use a, an adapter, which we're going to show you later in the video on how to install that. And that's where we're going to put all of our larger games, our other big files, because um, we want them to open up super fast. And this, this NVMe.2 drive um, runs three to six times faster than most conventional SATA um, um, SSD drives. Um, the other big upgrade that we're adding to the system is we are going from a quadro card, which are not great for gaming, to an EVGA NVIDIA GTX 1080 super clocked graphics card. Um, this card is awesome for gaming. Um, you know, they're, they're, they've dropped below $500. Um, and if you buy one used, you could probably even get a better price than that. Um, this system has a 685 watt power supply. That's something that you should take into consideration. If you have a 3610 already and it has a 425 watt power supply, you're going to want to upgrade that before you do any of these other upgrades like graphics cards uh, because you need the 685 watt to accommodate those graphics cards. Um, then we're also running uh, Windows 10 Pro 64 bit for our operating system. All right, so let's take a look at the overview of the T3610 chassis. So, uh, again, this is a refurbished system. You could call this like a scratch and ding, which we don't really care. We really care about performance. Um, we have a USB 3.0 port in the front and three other USB 2.0s. We have headphone, mic jack, which are awesome for gaming for headsets. Um, the USB 3.0 is great for VR. Here's our 685-watt power supply. Um, you know, it's, it's going to get the job done for what we're doing. Uh, three more USB 3.0 ports, two, uh, three more USB 2.0 ports. And then we have our gigabit network, additional uh, audio, and we're probably not going to use those PS2 ports. All right, so here's how you open up the side panel. It's completely toolless, which makes this system board really easy to access. Um, we've got a bunch or uh, two separate memory banks, single socket CPU, um, I.O. slots. Um, those are the slots we're going to put our graphics card and NVMe into. Um, here's our bootable 256 gig SATA drive, so there's room for one more drive. We want to add one more. All right, here is our GTX 1080. Um, this is an adapter that we need to use. Um, it's dual 6-pin to 8-pin, and that's what we need for our graphics card, as you can see, to accommodate the power that it requires. Now, because we have a 685-watt power supply on our T3610, um, it, it should come stock with a dual six pin uh, power adapter and then we're going to convert that to eight as you can see. So uh, this is kind of tough to do with one hand. I think we're going to cut out and try this again once we line it up a little bit better. So there's our cable again. And we will 
attempt with one hand to plug this in. Now, this will be a piece of cake for you if you have two hands. But again, this power adapter is required. If you forget to do this or you decide you don't want to do this, well, it's going to hang on post. It's not going to let you boot to your operating system. It's going to complain to you saying that, the, that you need to plug in this adapter. Okay, so that's plugged in. There's our 8-pin. Now we have to pop our graphics card into the blue PCI Express X X16 slot. Now this card's kind of heavy, so um, it, and it will eat up two of your PCI slots. So yet you you're gonna have to move those blue retention clips and then line up your card. And like I said, it's kind of heavy, so you all you really have to do is line the card up and let it drop into place. And when I say line it up, you want to line it up into the PCI Express slot as well as the PCI um, area over here where the blue retention clips are. And then it'll just drop right into place. Okay, now we have to plug in our auxiliary power, which we've already uh, plugged in our two six pin to, um, to dual six pin to allow for that eight pin adapter. It's plugged in. All right, now we got to put our NVMe drive in. So. This NVMe installs into an I.O. slot, so we had to use an adapter to install this card. Now, if you're curious, I mean, you can see the model number on this adapter, and we have some other recommendations on GreenPCGamers.com that will work, and they look slightly different, but they work the same. If you want to see how to install this card into the adapter, or the NVMe.2 SSD into the adapter, we've done a complete video on how to do that, so search our other videos. And you'll be able to find that um, to give you a little bit more information on the NVMe.2 drive. All right, so this is installed. Again, this will not be bootable. So we do need our other SATA drive that will boot to an operating system. Okay, so everything's installed. All of our big upgrades are done because we already had an awesome processor, uh, a regular SSD, and 24 gig RAM already installed. So here's a look at the back of the chassis now that we've installed our graphics card and our NVMe drive with the adapter. So we have a bunch of awesome ports, uh, three display ports, HDMI, a DVI port, a bunch of active ports to do you know three displays if you want to do that. All right, so now we've booted into Windows, and we have to enable this NVMe drive to be able to use it. So we right-click on Start, go to Disk Management, right-click. We see our drive. We're going to make a new simple volume. And we'll mount it as E, and then we're going to call it Super Fast Drive because that's what it is. This is where we want to save like our Steam library or other game libraries or other big uh, programs if you run CAD software that you want to open up really fast. So this is where we're going to save everything to. All right, so Super Fast Drive is there. Um, it's ready to go. And now we need to install our NVIDIA driver. This is also super important. So... Um, go to NVIDIA.com, like you see on the screen here. And we're, we're going to locate the correct driver. Now, because this is a, a GTX card, um, it's going to give us an option to when we install this um, to install the GeForce Experiences, which is really cool because it allows you to optimize your system for gaming. It picks the best settings for you. Um, now, if you're like me, you may still modify those settings, but it is a really nice thing to have. So download the latest driver, install it from NVIDIA.com, and once you do that, you have pretty much set up your system to play games. All right, so now we're going to run a benchmark, and this is a game called Tom Clancy's The Division. It's a really good game for a benchmark because it uses a ton of CPU as well as GPU. Um, so we're on all high um, or ultra settings. And our goal is, I mean, we want to be around 100 frames or higher based off these settings. Now, we can tweak the settings to get even higher, but ideally, it'd be nice to have higher ultra settings with a graphics card and a rig like this because it's a pretty nice looking rig. So here's the end of the benchmark test. And we basically want to see the results. And like I said, we're looking for 100 FPS or higher. Um, and, uh, and, and if we're not quite there yet, then we can try to tweak the settings, put some, you know, some of the things on medium or, or high and, and, and try to get to, you know, 150, 160 FPS. So let's see where we stand with high and ultra. All right. So we're right at about a hundred frames per second, which is pretty good for a rig of this price. I mean, you could easily spend $3,000 on a system that's com comparable to this system. Um, so, I mean, we're pretty happy with the way this ended up. 
um, you know, a, a gaming unit for around a thousand dollars. I mean, and you can go to greenpcgamers.com if that's not within your budget. And let's go back there. You can go to greenpcgamers.com, and if you can't afford an E5 2687W processor, um, you know, go for one of the lower end processors that, that are still close to four gigahertz, and you can get it for, you know, probably under a hundred dollars. There's different RAM options. You don't need to install the 1080 in the system, but you can go with the 1070 or 1060. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different options that you can install into the system. Uh, well, I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, if you could, please consider clicking on the subscribe button because all this information is completely free and we'd love to know um, if we're helping you out. Um, thank you so much for watching.